Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. Welcome to my weekly blog. Um, this week I want to start with um, a topic that over the years many students have asked me. I'll just, I don't have the answer to it, but many students in many of the courses, often they're engineering students, they have undergraduate engineering degrees, or they're later in life, and they often ask, how can I go back into physics? How can I get a physics graduate degree? How can I get a PhD in physics? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's been discussed a lot on the MITx forums and everything, and over the years there's only two students I know who have sort of gone back into, or at least gotten into the physics PhD programs. I've been out of the field for so long that I, I don't really have much to say to them other than the one thing that's totally in, in your control is the, um, the GRE physics exam, and you should be able to ace that. You should study real hard and ace that, and then you need to get recommendations and maybe do research and all kinds of other things. So without going into detail, I received an email this week from um, a student who was a, a Chinese student who calls himself Bruce because none of us would be able to pronounce his Chinese name. And um, he sent me an email at, saying that he was going to be in Las Vegas for the um, APS uh, meeting, which I didn't even know about, the uh, annual meeting. There's a bunch of meetings of the... Uh, APS, but the biggest meeting is um, in March, and that focuses on condensed matter. And I didn't even know that it was in Las Vegas. Um, anyway, here it is, and all most of it is focused on some sort of condensed matter. And um, so I d I'm not really that interested in in that per se. And I wish that um, the uh, April meeting of the APS, which is on um, the high energy physics and cosmology and, and all that other stuff, that's held in uh, Minnesota this year, and, and I have no interest in um, going to that. So, um, you know, I'd like to go to that. If that was in Las Vegas, I would have gone. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about was um, this student whose name is Bruce, he has a website. And um, this on this website, you can he has like a blog where he talks about everything that he did. He kept a diary, everything that he did and what he studied in order to um, switch from, I think he was in some kind of structural engineering undergraduate degree. And now he's at the University of Tokyo studying for a PhD, his um, in condensed matter physics, I think is where his interests lie. But... I read a lot of this blog, and I highly recommend reading it. It's kind of very interesting, but he gives a lot of reviews of books and things that he does in the Ph.D. program, and also, you know, what MOOCs he took and what order and, and how he got, how he was able to go from an engineering background to a theoretical physics background. It's very difficult. It's much easier to go the other way, I think, than to go into theoretical physics from another area. Anyway, I just wanted to um, bring that up. Um, I haven't really been doing that much this week. I've been slacking off. I don't know why, but I have continued adding notes to a lot of my um, group theory books. So I'm going to open up a group theory site shortly when I get these complete. Making latex notes is just very uh, time-consuming and difficult, let alone, you know, I have to reread re the stuff and everything. Like, these are my notes on this excellent book, but very hard to get. Old book on Shannestead's, um, one that proves everything about Young diagrams and everything. Of course, on the application of group theory to quantum mechanics. It's out of print, and it's an old book published in 76, but it's difficult to get. I'm sort of outlining it, and, um, you know, I've done some amount of work, but a huge amount to go. Um, you know, it's just doing all the latex and everything can be like a, a pain in the neck. But um, I'm making some progress here and there, and um, I'm trying to scroll to, you know, I got to look up latex packages on Tableau's and Young's diagrams and... Um, it's not that easy, but like I managed to do some things like these boxes and 
and even get him into like um, subscripts and everything. So anyway, eventually it will be done. And I've also, I have to investigate copyright in images. A lot of times there's like a online site where the book is um, has PDF and everything. I couldn't find one, but I found a site where you could sort of like um, I should have put it on here, but um, I don't even remember where, what the address is. If you Google this book, you'll get to that site where you can like borrow the book for an hour online. And basically what I did was I took screenshots. It's like two pages of screenshots. So I, you know, I took 180 screenshots and combined them into one PDF file. And you can see this book was like sort of self-published. It was typed. And the, all the math is like in handwriting, so it's, you know, it's not the uh, it's not the easiest book to read, but it's it's well worthwhile to cover a lot of things that a lot of other books don't cover. Of course, math books some cover it, but you know, math books are like they they cover it in extreme generality and are difficult to read sometimes. So um, the next thing I want to mention is. Um, I found this on White's blog, um, Peter White's blog, but Steve um, Witten is teaching a course at Princeton now. Um, um, it's called 539 Topics in um, High Energy Physics, and there are some problem sets online, and the lectures are available on YouTube, uh, Google um, Lecture 1 is Physics with Witten. And a lot of this is on classical general relativity and boundary conditions, but he's going to go very far, I'm sure. And I'm sure it's not that much for beginners, but anyway, it's out there. Um, so that's Witten's course. And then while I was reading um, Scott Aronson's blog, there was a reference to a um, an article on uh, the continuum hypothesis. I've, this is one of my goals in life is to master this stuff. And this is about a 50 page, sort of like for advanced undergraduate mathematics majors and computer science majors on a pretty good, not an out, more than an outline, but it seems like it's comprehensible and an understanding of the proof. And it's like 50 pages and they go through the background that you need and everything. I own about, um, you know, four or five books on, um, on, um, I own a lot of books on set theory and, and so on, but for, for specifically to continue my hypothesis, um, by the way, this is a, I always test this new chat GPT program, see what it comes out with. Some stuff is completely whiffs on, but I ask it, you know, can you outline a proof on the independence of the continuum hypothesis? And it gave a reasonable answer and then explained the forcing technique. So I guess this is one way to proceed, not the way I would recommend it, but just if you're curious about chat beat GPT and what it can do. But the books I own on set theory, if you wanted to study the continuum hypothesis, first of all, you need to understand set theory and logic. And there's two very good undergraduate starting books by... Um, Herbert Enderton, where I learned these things, elements of set theory and mathematical introduction to logic. There are, of course, a million logic books, books that cover this stuff, but I think these are two of the best ones. They don't skip any details. That's what I like about it. Um, I also own this book, Intermediate Set Theory, which is not that difficult, but I still haven't gotten completely through it. I need to get through those last chapters on forcing and proof of the continuum hypothesis, but I haven't been able to understand it. Um, another book I recommend is, this is a fantastic book, but it also has several chapters on, um, I want to see if this is the right book. Yeah, it also, I don't know why it says Koblitz here is the author. He's not the author. I guess in the new edition, maybe his name got on it, but it's, um, there's a second edition, and it's by Manon. And it's a great book on um, mathematical logic where it covers a lot of details, but it's at the graduate level. And he's got, and he uses Boolean algebras to prove it, and I wanted to look at the forcing proof. Um, another, um, 
Another old book that I own, a classic book, a Dover book, is Set Theory and the Continuum Hypothesis by the guy who actually proved the um, independence of it. Um, Godel did, um, in '38 prove that the hypothesis is consistent with that theory, and Cohen introduced forcing in, I think, early 63, 65 period, and he proved that the... Um, not the continuum hypothesis is also consistent with set theory. And there are a lot of books on these topics and everything, and it just, they leave out too many details for me. And as I get older, I can't keep all the stuff in my head. So, and the final book I have on this is, um, oops. Oh, I didn't, um, yeah. Okay, so this book by um, Smullyan, who's a, excellent author and writes many, many books on paradoxes and logic and all kinds of things, but he's got a book, Set Theory and the Continuum Hypothesis, but problem, but it's difficult. So um, that's all I have for this week. Um, as I said, um, I'm probably taking a month off or two months off of quantum field theory, and then I'll go back to quantum field theory. I want to do a lot of the group theory stuff and, and open up another site and, and post a lot of videos on group theory. But um, as you can, as you well know, I'm, I'm busy with a lot of different things, so making videos is not easy for me right now, but I will uh, try and get into them. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.